Ladies and gentlemen, Minecraft 1.11 is out and it brings a large amount of changes to how we do command locking, map making, resource pack making and so on. My name is Sly Slime, I'm here to guide you through these changes and tell you how to upgrade your command block systems to Minecraft 1.11. We're going to start with core system changes, changes to the way command blocks are run. Then we're going to move on to new commands and command changes, new entities and go through all of those, changes to NBT data, then move on to some game rule changes, notable bug fixes, and we'll end off with some information about the surrounding files like resource packs and loot tables. Now, the first thing that has changed is the keyless syntax of position selectors is gone. It is no longer supported. If you want to run a position based selector, you have to put in x equals, y equals, z equals, and r equals. Without this argument, your command will not work. Another important change is that target selectors now error out if they have invalid arguments instead of just ignoring them in the filters. That means that if you run a command with an invalid filter, you'll no longer kill every entity in the world, for instance. You also get a friendly error message, in this case invalid selector argument type equals shep. Let's fix it a little bit and try again and you will see that it still doesn't work but now you get a better error message. Selector type equals shep found nothing. So if we now fix that, you will see that it actually does work. Entity IDs have now changed as well, they now have a Minecraft colon prefix just like blocks used to. This is not strictly necessary to use when you summon an entity, but Minecraft will fill it in automatically if you tab complete. It is also not needed if you match with a selector, however, if you ever need to match the name of an entity inside NBT data, then you will need to match Minecraft colon as well. One of the biggest changes in this version is that many of the entities and tile entities have been renamed. In general, everything has been named consistently with lowercase characters and underscores instead of the capital letters used before to indicate spaces in names. This means armor stands are now called armor underscore stand instead of armor stand. For your command box and maps to work, you will need to go through all of your commands and replace these. This is better done by a script than it is by you manually. If you want to convert something manually, Mr. Gerardo has a great web-based tool that will update a command that you paste in and you will be able to copy and paste the results out. I'll put a link to that tool in the video description. There are also MC edit filters that can just go through an entire map and update all of your commands for you. So I really suggest that if you already have maps with command blocks that you want to update, run one of those filters on it. I'll try to include links to those in the video description as well. Together with this change is another change related to that. Block IDs, Entity IDs and Item IDs are no longer case sensitive. Most commands that interact with blocks and block types now use block state definitions instead of the numerical data value that was used before. This means that for instance in set block you can use variant equals smooth underscore granite instead of a data value of 3 or whatever that used to be. If you want to find out the corresponding block state definition for a numerical meta value from before, Onoware has made a complete list of translations from numerical values to the new state definitions. I'll include a link to that as well in the video description. Data values still do work, so your commands probably won't be broken because of this, but it's good to update these as well, especially if you're writing new commands because at some point they'll probably go away. This goes as well for more complex definitions, like this one where a birch fence case is set facing equals west and open equals true. If you want to include more than one block state, you do so by comma separating them and having each state equals its value. This of course also goes for detecting block, like in execute detect. This for instance detects a piston with a facing up. This means if I put a piston like so, nothing happens. However, if I place the piston facing up instead, the command triggers. To detect any block state, the what used to be minus one, you can use a star. In addition to the rename of entities, some entities have also been split up into separate entity types. This means guardians and elder guardians are now actually separate entity types, 
as are skeletons, strays and wither skeletons, zombies, zombie villagers and husks, horses, skeleton horses, zombie horses, mules and donkeys. This can be used by slash summon, of course, but also by commands that reference them in selectors, like kill. One more thing before we move on to the new commands and changes for existing commands. The slash help output and the tab completion output have been changed so that I output help sorted alphabetically, which is nice. There's one new command in this release, it is called slash locate and it is used to locate a certain type of structure. In this case we located a temple at minus 136 some y coordinates and minus 1176. If I run slash locate and then tab complete you will see what kinds of structures can be found. And cities, fortresses, mansions, mineshafts, monuments, strongholds, temples and villages. Sharp eyed ones of you will have noticed that some types of structures are missing like an eagle for instance. That is because those are considered variants. So for this case I believe an igloo is actually a variant of a temple, which is somewhat confusing. Sadly, this is mostly a command that you might find helpful to run in creative mode. The output is simply a text output and the application for using this in actual contraptions or maps is probably limited. Slash give can now give items to players disregarding the stacking restrictions that normally apply to that item. The action bar that is used more heavily in this version than before can now be accessed by the slash title command. The action bar is simply another subtype of title that you put in as the second argument. There are two new particles in this version. One is the llama spit particle. In the core game this is used for the llama's spit attacks. The other new particle is a totem particle. This one is used when the totem of undying activates to save a player from a killing blow. Now let's move on to the new entities. The new Vindicator Illagers are called Vindication underscore Illagers. They have the normal NBT tags that you would expect of an enemy mob, but they also have one specific one. If you name a Vindicator with the name Johnny, it will behave in a certain way, otherwise it will behave normally as a Vindicator. However, this behavior can also be controlled by setting a Johnny NBT tag. If you set the Johnny tag to 1, they will start attacking all types of living entities around them. The second new entity type is the Evoker Illager. This entity is called Evocation underscore Illager. It also of course has the normal enemy mob NBT tags. It also has one more tag, that one is called Spell Ticks. It is used when the evoker is channeling a spell and contains the number of ticks until that spell will actually fire. You can change this value, but it won't actually trigger a spell cast, it will simply change the value. It normally counts down by one each tick until it hits zero and the spell is fired. The other evoker related thing is the fang attack. That entity is called evocation underscore fangs. Yes, plural fangs. The most interesting tag with this one is a delay one. It is called warm up and you set it to the number of ticks you want before the attack should happen. You can change this value while you're running but once it hits zero the attack will start and then you cannot change it to have any effect after that. The final new enemy related entity is the Vex. The Vex faces through blocks and has some interesting properties in its data. It has a bounce x, bounce y and bounce z value. They are all integers and they seem to sort of confine the Vex to a certain space. They also have a life ticks value. Whenever that hits zero, the Vex will take one point of damage and then the life ticks value will reset to 20. So whenever this value hits zero for the first time, the Vex will start taking periodical damage one time per second. There's of course one more new entity. The llama is added in this version and it is called simply the llama entity, Minecraft colon llama. 
It has a variant feel, which if it's zero will cause the llama to be creamy, if it's one will cause it to be white, if it's two will cause it to be brown, and if it's three will cause it to be grey or silver. They also have a strength feel. The strength is the number of slots it can carry divided by three, but it also affects how likely they are to attack a wolf, and actually how likely a wolf is to run away from it. Finally, they also have a decor item, which is what item is in the saddle slot. This will generally be a carpet of some color. Finally, there's actually one more entity related to the llama. That is the llama spit, which is basically a projectile particle used to save llama spits in flight. The only NBT data that is possibly interesting to play with here is the UUID ones. Owner UUID least and the owner UUID most. Let's move on to changes in NBT data. The item format has changed. Items now require the count tag. If you do not have a count tag, the item will stop existing. So if you are summoning an item, for instance, you need to set the count to 1 in order for the item to properly summon. There is a new tag for snow golems. That tag is pumpkin and it determines if the head has been sheared or not. You can change this tag at runtime and the pumpkin will pop into place or pop out of place. Shockers also have a new data tag. It is color and that color determines their color, just like the shulker boxes can have different colors. There are two new game rules in this version. One of them is important enough that I even mentioned it in my update video for 1.11. It is called Max Entity Cramming, and it will kill off entities that end up too many in the same space. You can set it to zero, which totally disables this behavior and goes back to the normal behavior that we had before. This might not be as important for maps as it is for redstone contraptions and survival mode, but maybe it can be useful for some maps if you are using that, and some maps probably need to have a lot of living entities in the same space. The other new game rule is called Do Weather Cycle. Normally the weather will cycle, as you probably know, the previous way to disable this was to simply set a very very long timeout on the weather command. However, now you can set the game rule Do Weather Cycle to false instead, and it will prevent the weather from switching on its own accord, even when it ticks down to normally changing. Let's move on to some notable bug fixes. One that has hit many a map maker is the JSON sign score problem. That is now fixed, so you can properly put signs with score values on them again. Very nice for many map control systems. Marker armor stands had a bug for a while where they could be pushed by pistons, they can't anymore. And the boss bar would not correctly display custom names of bosses. That is now fixed, and while we're on that subject, the Wither would do some weird things in the custom maps, including breaking structure blocks, and that's fixed now, so if you had problems with that, it's now possible to combine Withers with structure blocks without having problems with that. They would also have a weird behavior where they could attack armor stands, and they no longer seek out and attack armor stands, including marker armor stands, so that is very good. One fix that I don't have a block to visualize here is slimes, they would reset to full health whenever you set any of the tags in their data. That is fixed in this version too, so if you've been hit by that in some creation, that should now work. Wings, they didn't render properly on mobs, they do now. So that might be good or it might be bad, depending on how you've used this. But either way, that actually works in this version. One final thing to mention inside this test world and demonstrate is that leads, if you summoned them using commands, didn't properly render. They do now in this version, so if you had some contraption with leads, that is now fixed. Some other things that aren't really possible to show in this world alone are armor stance hitboxes. They've changed a number of times. Double check any contraptions you have to make sure that armor stands are working, and especially small armor stands 
and Baby Zombie Pigmen. If they hold an item, they now hold the item slightly differently than they did before. So make sure you take a look if you've used especially tools like Armor Stand Animators or Armor Stand Posers. You'll sadly need to update the pose values of all of your baby armor stands, which will be the smaller size of items. Finally, let's talk about the surrounding files. Loot tables didn't exist for villagers, nor for the Ender Dragon, and that is fixed in this version, so you can override them if you want and add in loot for villagers and for the Ender Dragon in this version. And resource packs, the format has changed slightly. It is now using version 3 for the resource pack, and the only change as far as I know is that version 3 resource packs have to use lowercase file names for everything inside of the resource pack. Otherwise, the form is still pretty much the same, so it should be very easy to upgrade your resource packs. Now, I believe that was everything that I had to share with you when it comes to the upgrades to commands and to map making in Minecraft 1.11. Hope you found this useful, and if you did, please help me out and leave a like on the video. My name is Sliced Lime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Take care.